worship you this morning, oh God. We welcome your presence everlasting. Wherever we are worship, worshiping you from, oh God, we pray that you receive all the glory and the honor, my Father. Thank you, Lord, for this morning, oh God, as we approach the throne of mercy, Father. We pray that you will minister to us, O King of Glory, Father, that you will receive our worship, O King of Glory, Lord. We welcome you, O God. Come and be with us, O God. May you minister to each and every one of us, wherever we are, O God. We thank you, Lord. We worship you in Jesus' name. We pray. We want to welcome all of us this morning for our online service. Thank you for joining us from wherever you are watching us around the world. We pray that you will be ministered to. We pray that you will be enriched in your heart through the word of God as it comes to you this morning. We also want to welcome you and we request that you can share with your friends online. They can join you and watch with you as you enjoy our service that you will be ministered to. To you together with your family and your friends, you can tag them online. Our services are every Sunday. 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. So you are always welcome to join us and worship together with us. I would like to share a word as we continue with our worship from Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. The Bible says that the word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword. And I pray that the word of God this morning, even as we worship together, wherever you will be, the word of God will be able to reach you and minister to you this morning. 
Thank you, praise team. Let us continue worshiping and prepare our hearts to receive the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Asante Yesu kwa kuwa wewe ni mwema 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 We clap for Jesus hallelujah We clap for Jesus hallelujah Oh Asante Yesu kwa kuwa wewe Asante Yesu kwa kuwa wewe ni mwema Asante Yesu kwa kuwa wewe ni mwema Asante Yesu kwa kuwa wewe ni mwema
and bless the Lord, worship the King of Kings. He's worthy, he's the Lord of Lords. He's awesome in this place. Father, we give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. Join with me somebody and worship the King of Kings. Tell him he's worthy. He's worthy, he's worthy of worship. And all the praise you deserve, oh God. Asante Yesu. Baba unastahili kuabudiwa Nani kama wewe Yesu Oga Uninyunyi zia emaji Wakati wa ukame Uachi minyauke Wakati wa ukame Uwachi minya uke Hona kupe O baba Nunyizi ya ema Wakati wakati Minha uke, oh, 
Father, in Jesus' name, we do appreciate the honor you have given us by giving us yet another opportunity to be blessed and to have an encounter with you. We invite you, Lord, into this session. Have your way, Lord, in our hearts and in our lives. Have your way in our situations. We bless you and we appreciate you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I want to invite you once more as I welcome the praise team to have their seats. And I want us to get into the word of God together. I thank God because he has taken care of you. Uh, I know you are going, as the leader of the service said, I know you are going to be enriched this morning. I do believe that your life will not be the same again. Jesus said, that man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Our source is God, and that is why we need to always keep on listening to what he has to say to us. I want to continue by much more by, by coincidence as opposed to design. I find like what I'm sharing is in series with what I shared some time back late last month I did share on what I called what is man and today I want to build up on that because I found myself building up on the same and what I am sharing today if you wish you may call it that this is the title that I've given it it's condemned it's a question mark condemned or forgiven ministry or fellowship condemned or forgiven ministry or fellowship as we get along you will understand better what i mean with that heading and i want us to open our bibles in the book of genesis chapter 2 verse 7 as I begin, I want to remind you something that I'll keep on reminding you every time I have an opportunity. And the reason why I want to remind you is because though we are spirits, we have a soul, and we live in a body, but nature makes us to be very conscious, especially of the body. And if we go an extra mile, we are more conscious of the soul than we are conscious of our spirit. That is a bit unfortunate because we are spirits, we have a soul, and we live in a body. And I want us to open in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Let me begin there. And this is what the Bible says. Then the Lord formed, this is amplified, so it amplifies, then the Lord God formed, that is created the body of man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils 
and the man became a living being, an individual complete in body and spirit. If you open faster to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45, the Bible continues to explain what this means. Here in Genesis 2, 7, the Bible says we were created complete with the life of the Spirit of God in us and with the body and with the soul. But as we continue to come out more clearly, the scriptures tell us that this is 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45. The scriptures tell us the first Adam became a living being, an individual personality, and the last Adam, Christ, became a life-giving spirit. So here Jesus is introduced as a life-giving spirit. And we are introduced here as a living being or as living beings. But it is not, let's go to verse 46, but it is not the spiritual life that came first, but the physical and then the spiritual life. The first man was from out of the earth made of dust and was earthly minded. The second man is the Lord from out of heaven. Now those who are made of the dust are like him who was first made of the dust. That was Adam, the first Adam. And he was earthly minded. And as is the man from above, so also are those who are heavenly minded. And just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, so shall we. And so let us bear the image of the man of earth. This is just to emphasize what I said, that we are spirits living in a body and having a soul. That is very important for you to understand because it will put your priorities in order. Who do you give priority? Let me continue before I go to something else. In Hebrews 12, 9, this is what the Bible says. It calls God the father of spirits. Just to emphasize that we are spirits. We are not bodies. You are not a body. I know we relate with each other through the body. That is why maybe when I meet with you in the morning, I will tell you you are smart. We relate with each other through the body. Because the body gives us the ability to move about on earth. But we are not bodies. We are spirits living in a body and having a soul. Hebrews 12 verse 9, this is what it says. Moreover, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us and we submitted and respected them for training us. Shall we not much more willingly submit to the father of spirits and live by learning from his discipline? And finally, 2 Corinthians 5.1, For we know that if the earthly tent, our physical body, which is our house, is torn down through death, we have a building. We, even after the body is torn down, we will still be existing. Who are we? Spirits which live in a body. Then he says, We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. Having said that, now I can go to the next thing. I wanted you to get that background so that I can move to the next thing. Now, what am I saying from where we are? Now, there's, there is a status for every human spirit on earth. There is a status. When you talk about status, these days we have WhatsApp status, we, you, we have always had marital status, maybe when you are filling a form somewhere for an, an application, they will ask for your marital status. That is the same status I'm talking about. What do we mean with status? We, we are when we talk about status, we are talking about one's standing. Or we are talking a situation at a particular time during a process. That is what we call status. Now what status happens for human spirits on earth. Every human spirit has two status, spiritually speaking. One of the status is what I am calling condemned from God's point of view. 
The other status, which I will also continue to explain, is forgiven. Or if you want to say, saint status. Can I explain what I mean? There is condemned and there is forgiven. That is spiritually speaking. You may have other status. You may say you are married or you are single. You may, you may say you are male or you are female. Your gender. Those are status. But I'm talking about our spiritual standing. We are either condemned from God's point of view or we are saints or forgiven for that matter. And I want us to go to John chapter 3 verse 18. John chapter 3 verse 18. And this is what the Bible says. John 3 verse 18. There is no condemnation against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been condemned. For not believing in God's one and only son. The Bible says there is no condemnation for those who believe. But for those who don't believe, they are already condemned. Unless they change that status as we shall see. What do I mean with condemned? Number one, the Bible states very clearly that we are all born sinners. We are born sinners. Wherever you have been born, whichever, whoever is your father or mother, when we are introduced into this world, because we are introduced into this world through birth, we are born sinners. And that can be seen clearly from Psalms chapter 51 verse 5 which says, I was brought forth in a state of wickedness and in sin my mother conceived me and from the beginning I too was sinful. We are all born sinners. We can do nothing about it. We cannot blame God about it. From the time the first Adam sinned, his progeny became sinners. We are born sinners. Unfortunately, when we mature a little bit, we stop just becoming sinners by birth and we become sinners by choice. Because we have something in us which pushes us into sinful decisions. And so we become sinners by choice. Ephesians chapter 2, 2, the Bible says, You used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world, he is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. What do I mean here? As early as we can make decisions, something, the sinful nature in us, drives us to make sinful decisions. I don't need to explain this, but just leave a child to grow without being guided and the very first choices that child will make are sinful choices because of the, of the sinful nature in us. And that drives us, drives us to the next point where I'm saying because of that status, the status of condemnation, we are constantly in need of a savior. We find ourselves in a situation where we need somebody to save us from ourselves. Even without mentioning the devil. You need somebody to save you from yourself. I have met so many people in my lifetime who are crying out for somebody to save them from themselves. Before you go to the devil, they need somebody to save themselves, to save them from their sinful habits. They need somebody to save them from their minds and thoughts which move all over without any control. That tells you, you need a savior. Praise the Lord. You need a savior. Every one of us is in need of a savior. And this is what the Bible says in 1 John 4, 14. And we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. The father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. 
Now let me go to the next status, which I am calling forgiven. I said we have two status. Every human spirit finds itself in two status. Either forgiven or condemned. The honest thing that will remove you from condemnation is what is called forgiveness. And for forgiveness comes because one has genuinely repented before the creator. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, this is what the Bible says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. In him, we are talking about Christ, we have redemption. Redemption is being bought back. Somebody had been taken away and sold out and somebody is willing to pay a ransom for you to be bought back. The Bible says in Christ we have redemption. And not just redemption, we have the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of his grace. And let me say this, that our forgiveness, when we turn to Jesus in repentance, our forgiveness is not an end. It is a beginning. It opens another chapter of many good things that happen to those who have been forgiven. For example, you will understand from your Bible that one of the things that happens, among many other things, the Bible says Jesus comes into our lives and heals our diseases. The salvation package, if you allow me to call it that, it carries our healing. Healing for our bodies, healing for our emotions, healing for our hearts. It is a package that carries healing. Number two, another thing that happens when you are forgiven, the Bible says we are lifted in our spirits and we are seated high in the heavens together with Christ in what the Bible calls Ephesians 2.8 in the heavenly places. We are raised and seated with him in the heavenly places. Another thing that happens, among many other things that I may not be able to say today, the Bible says we are born of the spirit and it is at this point that our spirit i said we are we are spirits that we become living spirits because before our encounter with christ we are spirits which are inactive and dead according to the scriptures but at this juncture when we are forgiven when we turn to christ we become living spirits. And that is why the Bible says in, the, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 that we are in the world, but not of the world. Praise the name of Jesus. And after this happens, we are ushered into something else which I'm calling relationships. When we submit to Jesus and we are forgiven, we are ushered into relationships. And that is why if you go back to my title for the message, I talked about condemned or forgiven. Ministry or condemned or forgiven. Ministry or fellowship. That was my title. That second part is talking about the relationships I want to share with you today. We are ushered into relationships. Every human spirit has relationships. Has two status, as I said, before God, and also before God has two important relationships. And one of the relationships I'm calling ministry. Whether you know it or not, you will find yourself in a relationship called ministry. And in that relationship, you are either a minister or a recipient of ministry. Praise the name of the living God. What do I mean with ministry? Number one, in ministry, there are reconciliatory relationships. 
Relationships which are meant to reconcile people to God. And in that kind of a relationship, you are either a minister depending on your status or you are either a recipient of the ministry depending on your status. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 to 19, this is what the Bible says. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them, and he gave us the wonderful message of reconciliation. I like particularly verse 19, where the Bible says that God was in Christ, even as Jesus was being raised on the cross. Something which is the mystery of Christ was happening. The Bible says, even on the cross, God was in him, reconciling the world to himself. And that is part A of ministry. It is reconciliation, bringing people back to God, people who had been taken away by the enemy. And we are in this because we have moved to Jesus. Or we are in this because we need Jesus. We are either being reconciled or we are helping others to be reconciled. And I want to challenge you, whichever side you are, you better take it seriously. Some of us are in the ministry of reconciliation. We better do it like never before. We better do it like we mean it. I want to remind you something that keeps on clicking in my mind. Our salvation, for, the, for those of us who have given our lives to Jesus, our salvation is closer than when we first believed. That is what the Bible says. Jesus is coming faster than we expect. And if I want, I would challenge you to do anything. Make sure you are taking your reconciliation ministry much more seriously than ever. And for those of us out there who have not even begun, may you rush unto Jesus and let him save you. Number two, which is also part of restorative relationships, uh, part of ministry is what I call restorative relationships where we need to restore people who have been with Jesus but for one reason or another they are no longer going on well in their relationship with him dear brothers that is Galatians 6 1 Galatians 6 1 dear brothers and sisters if another believer is overcome by some sin you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path and be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. That is a restorative relationship where somebody has been in Christ, but for one reason or another, he cannot continue the way he was, or for one reason or another, he is discouraged and needs somebody to come and restore him. And I want to sound a warning here because some of us have found themselves in these relationships but they forget they are in these relationships as ministers it is possible for somebody to be trying to lead somebody to Christ and then begin to be tempted to take advantage of that person the Bible says for example do not be yoked with non-believers it is a temptation for somebody to relate with somebody who is an unbeliever and be tempted to treat him or her as somebody he is fellowshipping with because that is the next part of ministry or the next part of relationships, which is fellowship. Let me go to that so that you'll understand what I mean. Having done with the part which I'm calling ministry, where you are trying to lift up somebody, Somebody is not in Jesus. You need to lead him to Jesus. Somebody has been um, led away from Jesus. You need to restore him back to Jesus. The other part of relationships which you are ushered unto is called fellowship. In Hebrews 10 verse 23 to 25, this is what the Bible says. Let us hold tightly to the hope we are firm 
For God can be trusted to keep his promise. And that is part A of fellowship, which is fellowship with the Father. When we come to Jesus, we are now able to commune with the Father. We have fellowship with him. And that is where we tell people, you can now pray. And when you pray, pray believing that God will hear you. Jesus was heard telling his disciples, up to now you have not played, prayed in my name. You have not asked anything in my name. Ask so that you may receive, that your joy may be full. We get into fellowship with the Father. One of the things that the enemy was keen to take away from human beings was fellowship with the Father. But thank God it has been restored. Praise the name of Jesus. You now have fellowship with the Father. You can call him Father. And that is what the Bible calls him, where we read in Hebrews chapter 12, the Father of spirits. He is your Father. He is my Father. And then there is another part of the fellowship, which is also important. And I believe it, I think it is one of the things that this pandemic has really attacked Verse 23, 24 says, the same book, Hebrews chapter 10, and let us think of ways to motivate each other to acts of love and good works. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to good works and acts of love. We are called upon to motivate one another. We are called upon to encourage one another and to good works. Somebody will need to be encouraged to do something good. It is not natural for us to do good things. The human nature, because of sin, has been used to doing bad things. But the Bible tells us, now that we are in the kingdom of God, now that we have a relationship with the Father, now that we have a, relation, a, new, we are, we have a new kind of status, let us motivate one another to do good works. And another part of the same, and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Another thing we are encouraged, and I want to encourage you today, is be in the habit of looking for one another. Be in the habit of looking for fellowship. Make yourself available to your brothers and your sisters. Make yourself available to your spiritual leaders. Don't hide yourself. Do you have a challenging issue? God has given you human relationships that can help you, that can build you up, that can encourage you. Together with what one would call a vertical relationship with the Heavenly Father, you also have what I will call horizontal relationships that are meant to build you up. You also have mental relationships where you are able to lead somebody to Jesus. Where you are able to help somebody who is straying away from Jesus and bring them back, restore them back into fellowship with the Father. As I finish, I can quickly remind you what we have said I have said we are human spirits because we are spirits, we live in a body and we have souls. And human spirits have two status. One of them is condemned depending on their relationship with Jesus. Which side of Jesus are you? Are you on his side or against him? If you are against him, you are condemned. But if you are on his side, that means you have repented, you are forgiven. And then I said, when this happens, when we are forgiven, when we turn to him, we are, or even when we are not, we also have relationships. And I said, the first relationship is ministry, where depending on your status, you are either being ministered to or you are ministered. And then I said, the other part of relationships is we have fellowship. When we have given our lives to Jesus, we have fellowship with the Father and we have fellowship with one another. Where do you stand? Which is your standing? 
I want us to finish there as I pray for, for you. Let us pray. As we bow our hands in prayer, you may be there and you need to give your life to Jesus. You need to move from condemnation to acceptance. You need to move from condemnation to sainthood. I want to pray together with you. I will ask you to repeat this prayer after me. Can you say, Father, I humble myself before you, admitting that I'm a sinner in need of a savior. May you come and forgive me and save me now. I repent my sins and turn to you. Save me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The other group of people that I want to pray for, I believe you are there in the house and maybe you need restoration or you're in there in the house and for one reason or another, maybe through bitterness or unforgiveness, you have lost fellowship with your brothers. I have had some people tell me I don't have any church currently because I have been hurt and I don't want to go back to church. And that is robbing you of fellowship. There could be somebody else there. You are not in a position to pray because maybe of unrepented sin. You did something and you are not able to repent. And you are asking God to come and restore you into fellowship with him. I want to pray for that group of people. Can I pray with you now? Father, in Jesus' name, remember that one that is watching me this morning. Lord, I pray that you may heal him or her. I pray for restoration. I pray for healing. In the name of Jesus. That one cannot go to church because she has been hurt in church. Lord, I pray that you raise a standard for him or her that they will be able to go back to church and look for fellowship. Lord, I pray for your grace and mercy to be together with every one of us, O oh Lord. Thank you for using me and making me a blessing. For you pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' holy name. Amen. May God bless you so much. I trust we will meet another time. We are always on this program every Sunday, as you have been told by the leader of the service. And may God bless you. Also, we believe that you'll be a blessing to us through the numbers you can see on the screen. You can call us and tell us something about what we are sharing with you. Maybe you have given your life to Jesus. You can tell us the same because we need to pray with you and encourage you. You would also maybe want to be a blessing to this ministry through giving. The numbers are on the screen and you can use them and you'll be blessed. May God bless you so much and have a powerful day. Amen. He leadeth me, He leadeth me by His own hand. He leadeth me, His faithful follower will be for by His son. He leadeth me, leadeth me, He leadeth me, He leadeth me, by His own.